Hi lovely book friends, I hope you're all doing really well. Um, I'm going to start doing a new series of videos now because if you're like me then when you're feeling a certain way you will want to read a certain book. I find that if I'm having a bad day I want to pick up a happy book or if I'm kind of having a bad day sometimes I might want to pick up a sad book, I might want to pick up a scary book, I might want to pick up a book that makes me feel good. So I'm going to do a series of videos about books to read when you're feeling certain ways. So today I'm going to start off with books that will make you cry and make you feel sad. Then I'm going to do um, books that make you happy, books that will make you laugh, books that will make you scared. And kind of a little series of videos so that if you're ever looking for books to make you feel a certain way then you've got some ideas here. And as you all know, I kind of read mainly contemporary fiction, so most of these, or all of these, are contemporary titles. So if you're looking for kind of more classical or classical, classic, or kind of fantasy, dystopian, sci-fi, then this isn't kind of for you. But these are the books that I read and I love that made me cry. And there's ten of these, um, because a lot of books um, seem to make me cry. So I'm going to start off with kind of the more YA-ish titles um, and they are mainly books that I have read recently um, that have made me cry that are supposed to be YA but also there's one or two books that I read when I was growing up that made me cry so I'll start off with those ones um, and the first one is called Before I Die by Jenny Downham now this book will make you cry absolutely floods of tears and it is about a girl who gets told that she is um, got a terminal illness so she is going to die um, so she makes a list of all the things that she wants to do before she dies and she kind of goes on this little journey to try and tick off as many things as she can before she dies but I think this has been re-released recently under the, a new title called Now is Good but I think it's exactly the same book but just a different title so if you've read Now is Good then I think you've probably read this book but definitely one worth picking up because it is a very sad and moving book but it's also a book that will make you kind of want to make every single day of your life count and that's a really nice moral of this story even though it is inherently sad it's also got a really nice message and meaning behind what it's talking about. The next book is a book that this is an old library copy um, it is Lucas by Kevin Brooks. Now I absolutely adore Kevin Brooks and I love his YA titles and his adult titles as well um, and I haven't read this book in absolutely years but it's about a girl who meets a boy called Lucas. Um, the blurb says that he is the strangest, most beautiful boy she's ever seen. And when she meets him, her world comes alive. But to others, he quickly becomes an object of jealousy, prejudice and hatred. Caitlin, who's the protagonist, tries to make sense of the injustice that lurks at every unexpected twist and turn. Until she realises that she must do what she knows in her heart is right. A particularly moving and unusual love story and that is exactly what it is it is a really moving story and Kevin Brooks has got the amazing ability to write such powerful and emotional books for a young audience that I mean when I read them when I was about 15 14 15 16 they really moved me and there's also another one called by Kevin Brooks called Black Rabbit Summer and that one is also fantastic and will really kind of give you all the feels as they say so that's Lucas okay now I'm gonna move on to this one and obviously every single person is gonna say this but made them cry it is the fault in our stars by the ever lovely John Green now I probably don't need to explain anything about this book because if you have been alive for the past year you will know everything about this book but basically it's about two teenagers who both have cancer and they meet at a cancer support group and then they embark on a gorgeous love affair and it's a book about living life for the moment and enjoying every single second and how even if things aren't going to always be right for just small moments they can and I just absolutely adore this book so so much and it made me cry so much as well I was just sitting in floods of tears when I finished it so if you want a, a good book that's going to make you cry but also a book that is going to make you question a lot of things and really think and enjoy life then this is definitely the book for you the next book I think I might have talked about before I'm not too sure but it is called Catch Up Clouds by Annabelle Pitcher and I love the cover to this and I also love the um this is is this a spine it's not called the spine is it that's the spine but this whatever this part of the book is called I think it's beautiful it's got all these like little birds on it um and Catch Up Clouds I'll read you the blurb because if this blurb doesn't grab you then I don't know what will Zoe Collins has a dark and terrible secret that she dares confess to no one. But one day she hears of a criminal on death row who knows all about secrets and lies and betrayal. Desperate to confide in someone, Zoe picks up a pen. 
these are the letters she wrote. So this is a book about a young girl called Zoe who writes letters to a man on death row because she has a deep, dark secret that she wants to share with somebody, but she doesn't know who to share it with. So she finds this random stranger, stranger's address um, and writes to him on death row. She never gets any replies, but the whole book is told um, in letters. So as you can see, it's got kind of like, they're like laid out as letters and the whole book is laid out like that. And it's just, it's just an incredible book and it really did make me incredibly emotional and some of the phrases and some of the sentences and quotes from this just were really so beautifully written and they were quite lyrical as well and it was just it just really is a book worth reading so if you haven't read that already then I definitely would rec rec definitely would recommend it and I also I don't know if you can see that I can't see where I'm holding the camera uh, she's also written another one called My Sister Lives on the Mantelpiece which I haven't read but I really want to read that one and because I imagine that that will be just as good because I think this is her second one so yes really excited to read that now again this is a book that I've probably talked about far too much and a book that you can probably totally guess is going to be on this but The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chobsky or oh, I don't know how to say a sentence, is it Chobsky or Trofsky? I'm sorry, if I'm, I should know how to pronounce your name but I don't um, but yeah, Perks of Being a Wallflower, again if you haven't heard of this book and you've never read it then I don't know where you have been living for the past few years it is a fantastically fantastic coming of age story about Charlie and oh it's just I can't even put it into words how amazing this book is and this was a book that made me stay up late into the night and read it until completion and I just adored the characters the plot everything about it is just perfect and if you don't cry or don't get emotional when you read this then you might have something wrong with you so definitely one to read and I'm really sorry about the light that keeps shining on these covers so the next one again is probably a book that if I haven't talked about before then um, I, I'm sure I've talked about it before it is a Silver Linings Playbook by Matthew Quick I absolutely adore the cover look at that and the yellow as well it's also bright and pretty I don't like the fact that this is a movie version cover but I couldn't want you know once books are made into films it's really hard to get the non-film versions but the Silver Linings Playbook is about Pat and he has been like um, sectioned in a mental health institution and he, or a psych it says like psychiatric hospital and he goes back home to live with his parents and he wants to try and impress this girl or his, his wife Nikki who's now estranged from and it's just it's one of those stories where you completely and utterly fall in love with the protagonist and everything that happens you are on the protagonist's side for the whole length of the book and I could really relate to him and I could really understand all his motivations and the way he was feeling and everything about it just made me like whenever and whenever anything happened to him that was upsetting or confused him I just felt so emotionally attached to him as a character that I just I just crumbled and I cried so much when I read it so Again, a really amazing book that will make you cry lots. The now, now, the next four are books that I haven't really talked about too much before, so they're new. Um, the first one is The Kissing Gates, and this is by someone called Mackenzie Ford. Now, I've never ever seen anybody talk about this book before, and I don't really know kind of anything about the author, but I, this was a book that I bought probably about four or five years ago now. It's published in 2008. And I picked it up in a um, bookshop because I thought it looked quite nice and the tagline is one, wim one woman, two lovers and a wartime secret that will change their lives forever. And this is about a soldier called Hal and when he is fighting in the war on Christmas Day in 1914 when they have that, um, when the um, Germans and the English play football, um, he meets a German lieutenant called Wilhelm and he gives... Um, him a photo um, and he says that if he no so Wilhelm gives Hal a photo and he says that if Hal survives the war then he must go and find this woman and tell her how much Wilhelm, Wilhelm loved him so the battle the war keeps going on but Hal gets injured so he goes home and he finds this girl called Sarah but instead of telling her that Wilhelm is looking out for her and he loves her and he'll be back after the war he falls in love with her instead and doesn't tell her about this other soldier that's the one who he's supposed to tell he's in love with her if that makes any sense at all shall I read you the blurb that might be easier 
When English soldier Hal strikes up a conversation with German Lieutenant Wilhelm during the ceasefire in No Man's Land on Christmas Day 1914, he has no idea the impact this chance meeting will have. Wilhelm is in love with an English woman, Sam, and presses a photograph into Hal's hand. If he survives the war, Hal must promise to find Sam and give her this token of affection. Invalid at home while the battle rages on, Hal goes in search of Sam, but the moment he sees her, he is in trouble. With Wilhelm's photograph hidden in his pocket, Hal begins a life and a love affair meant for someone else. So that's a definitely better description than I can give you. Um, and it's absolutely stunning, this book. And I don't really know why nobody talks about it and nobody really kind of says that they've read it because it's just beautiful and moving and it really is something that will tug on your heartstrings. And I don't think this book made me cry as such, but it definitely made me sad and emotional. So this is really a book worth reading if you haven't read it already. I cannot recommend this book enough. The next book is, I think, one I've probably talked about actually in the past. Maybe not in vlogs, but I've definitely talked about it in my blog. And it is The Ice Cream Girls by Dorothy Coombson. If you didn't watch it last year, there was a TV adaptation which was absolutely rubbish because it completely changed the plot of the novel and it was a completely different ending, which was atrociously upsetting. Um, but this is a really stunningly written and moving and emotional book. Um, as teenagers, Poppy and Serena were the only witnesses to a tragic event. Amid heated public debate, the two seemingly glamorous teens were dubbed the ice cream girls by the press and were dealt with by the courts. Years later, having led very different lives, Poppy is keen to set the record straight about what really happened, while Serena wants no one in her present to find out about her past. But some secrets will not stay buried, and if theirs is revealed, everything will become a living hell all over again. It's basically about these two girls who, in one summer, they were um, abused by their teacher, or they were groomed by their teacher, and the, both of the girls kind of formed a love-hate relationship with each other, and the teacher dies, and the two girls are the only people that know what happened, and yes, it's really interesting and moving and gripping and tense and fantastic book and I love Dorothy Coombson and this is just an absolutely stunning book. This was published in 2010 so it's about four or five, four years old now, not 2015, 2014, yeah four years old so I think quite a lot of people have read it but if you haven't then I would say out of all of these books this is the one you have to read because it just, it stays with me forever and it will stay with me forever and I'm going to reread this book for years and years to come so definitely a book worth reading. The final two, this one is a book that I've talked about before, it is This is a Love Story by Jessica Thompson. Now this book made me cry massive, massive tears. Um, this is a love story, boy meets girl and girl falls a boy, that much is true. But when Sienna meets Nick, it's not the way it happens in love stories, it's because of a squirrel on water skis. She sees Nick's dangerous brown eyes and thinks don't fall into them. Who will be there to catch Sienna when she falls? She is so fragile, she has so many secrets, and he is not that serious. Funny and sad, this is a story of two people destined never to come together in the great love affair they crave more than anything else. This book completely tugged on my heartstrings, and there was a lot... There's one I can really remember, one point in this book, where I actually sat there and my mouth dropped open and I just sobbed because... It was just so unexpected and something happened that just completely threw me and oh it just gave me all the feels as they say. Um, so yeah this is definitely a book worth reading. It's a nice kind of chiclety story but it's also got lovely layers to it and it's definitely got a really good feel of emotion too so a really good book worth reading. And then the final book, this is the one that I've read the most recently and it is The Universe vs Alex Woods by Gavin Extents. Now if you haven't read this book then why um but you really do need to read it it's about alex and he um is bullied at school and one day he gets hit by a meteor in the head um and then he's never kind of the same after that and he has epilepsy one day he's being chased by some bullies and he ends up in a old man's shed and the old man's kind of like get out of my shed what are you doing here and his mother alex's mother makes him go and spend time with this old man to say sorry for breaking his shed and ruining his shed and these two unlikely people and an old man and a young boy make an irreplaceable and completely and utterly compelling bond with each other and this is a story about their kind of journey together and what happens and oh my goodness me if you want to cry then you read this book it's just it just 
I can't even find the words to describe it, just the way that it's written and the lyrical way of the text and the characters and the just it's so intense and so claustrophobically brilliant that you cannot help but get sucked into it and just feel all of the emotions that the characters are going through so this is a book that you definitely definitely have to read if you haven't already so that guys is my 10 books that i think you should read if you want a book to make you cry or a book to make you sad not only are these books sad they're also kind of really life affirming and give you a lot of nice kind of morals to live by about making sure that you make every last day count and just to kind of give you a sense that everything can and will get better so definitely some really great books that you should definitely think about reading so thanks for watching this guys and i'll see you very soon bye